Hello, I'm Jamie Curley, and this is my presentation for the Barcelona chair. The chair was first exhibited at the International Exhibition, hosted in Barcelona, Spain, in 1929. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe designed the German pavilion for the exhibition, which was to house its reception, presided over by King Alfonso XIII. The pavilion certainly made an impression and gave Mies the opportunity to showcase his vision for future living, with its minimalist design and open plan, while still exhibiting exuberant materials such as marble. Within the pavilion were only three chairs and three footstools, and these were the Barcelona chairs. The Barcelona chair was designed by Mies with his design partner Lily Reich. Reich had worked with Joseph Hoffmann in Vienna, even contributing to the Cubist chair, but she is more known for her work with the Deutschland Werkbund, an organisation that aimed to maintain traditional skills and techniques, much like the arts and crafts movement in the latter part of the 19th century. Mies' background was within architecture. He initially worked with Peter Behrens, alongside Le Corbusier and Walter Gropius, and had developed strong rendering skills in this time. His early career was in the neoclassical style, but like his contemporaries, he delved into the modernist movement in the 1920s. The two first met in 1924, after Mies had joined the Deutschland Werkbund and continued to work together for more than a decade after. Due to Reich only gaining recognition in the 21st century, there is a lack of records of her involvement within their collaborations. What we do know is that Mies only designed furniture when working with Reich, and we can see design elements that both would have con contributed, such as the Mr. Lounge chair and the Tugendhat chair. The frame today is made from a single piece of either stainless steel or chrome in the style of a scissor chair, with a low seating height and the weight being distributed to the sides and 17 elastic straps to support two cushions. Originally the frame was four pieces had to be bolted together, but due to developments in factory techniques, this can now be one solid piece. The cushions are formed of 40 hand-cut leather panels, all from a single cowhide, which are hand-sewn and biscuit-tufted. Today, Noel offer three different types of leather, although the original was actually made from pigskin that was dyed ivory. As stated before, the chair was to be made for the king and inspiration had been drawn from aristocratic seating from the ancient world, a story that's become popularised from multiple sources, but most importantly, Knoll, who produced the chair today. We can see the S shape in the frame that was inspired from the Serica rule of ancient Rome, and this shape has been rotated by 90 degrees. There's design elements from ancient Egypt too, with the scissor-shaped frame distributing the weight to the sides and the low seating height, and including the back of the chair, with the back of the stool also representing the Serica rule. As much as the chair has historic elements within its design, there are also aesthetics of modern contemporaries. Reich's work with Joseph Hoffman is present in the biscuit tufting found in the cushions, showcasing Reich's contribution to the design, and the quarter section of a circle in the frame, much like the LC4 by Charlotte Perrien, and the tilted 20 degree angle seen in Marcel Brewer's Vasily chair, while showing the skin and bones aesthetic popularised by the Bauhaus. So what were they exploring with this design? During the 1920s, there was dividing styles that had emerged. The Art Deco movement was drawing inspiration from ancient designs, most notably Egypt, whereas modernism was looking into new materials and looking for new innovations. In the Barcelona chair, we can see that Reich and Mies were combining these two approaches. They have drawn on their knowledge and experience and were offered the opportunity to present a new throne to a king, promoting a new way of thinking. The chair was originally only designed for the exhibition, but then was replicated for American architect Philip Johnson in 1930, and had proven to have made an impression on the design world. The commercial success of the Barcelona chair happened due to Florence Knoll. She saw an opening in the American art market for office design, and adopted the modernism furniture of Europe for this function. She changed the image of modernism from providing contemporary materials to the public at an affordable price, to becoming fashionable items from foreign imports, making them a luxurious commodity within the international style. The Barcelona chair has since been depicted in multiple settings, and most notably in film and TV. It featured in Patrick Bateman's apartment in American Psycho to depict an individual of dear taste, and in M's apartment in James Bond, a bohemian setting that sets the tone for M's character in everyday life. We have also seen it in Tron Legacy and the series Suits, showing its versatility in different settings. And it's this bohemian versatility that has very much become the advertising strategy behind the chair, realising what Reich and Mies were searching for, a new way to be in our surroundings. 
So how can the Barcelona chair be defined? There are many who consider this piece to be an example of modernism, and sometimes more specifically Bauhaus, although it should be noted that the chair was designed before Mies van der Rohe had taken over as director of the Bauhaus. It does share comparisons with modernism. The skin and bones frame and the use of new materials and factory techniques are visible, and does emphasise the importance of the individual experience. But modernism is about rejecting the past and looking for the future. The Barcelona chair cannot meet this prerequisite, as even Noel would admit it boasts traditional appreciation. The chair is based on neoclassical design, evidently showing that Mies was drawing on this previous experience and knowledge to produce the modern throne to the king. It should also be noted that this piece is deliberately decorative and has always been promoting its handmade elements, the opposite of mass production techniques that the modernists promoted along, with its high price tag to deliberately make this piece effectively elitist. There is a view that postmodernism was the movement when pluralism was applied, but this is reductive to the modernist movement. The modernists were searching for new solutions on how we move forward in society during turbulent times. The Barcelona chair, for example, was presented to King Alfonso XIII just two years before he was dethroned and the Second Spanish Republic was started, and three years before the Nazi party would cause the Bauhaus to close, albeit under Mies' directorship. The Barcelona chair shows how the old world was morphing into something new, and Reich and Mies composed that within this design. It has not influenced future chair designs as such, but more how interiors are designed. Within a room, the chair depicts a status, withstanding the different tastes of time and has truly become a modern throne.